long day at work in the spring of 2004, I met up with a friend at the bar. Pissed, tired, and just uptight, I was in need for a beer. Three in, I discovered he and a couple of buddies were heading to Las Vegas for a far out convention called the Lebowski Festival. I had seen The Big Lebowski when it first came out, but like many, I did not get the grandeur of the movie. Curious, I packed up my camera gear and set off to lost wages, expecting nothing but hoping for everything. Yeah, take it easy with the camera, man. Funny La Jolla, I mean, yeah. Just take it easy, man. You name me one movie that has so many lessons in life in it. Nothing is close to this movie. So you know we're the only four people in the world who really had a big following for this movie. <laughs> Guy went overseas. I know this the story. Sorry. And the guy, he was sitting at a bar in the UK, and he was kind of venting to the bartender as people do. And he turned to the bartender and he goes, "Friends like these, man." And then the bartender kind of looked up and his eyes kind of sprouted and they're like, "Friends like these," and they began to quote Lebowski quotes all night. Now the story unfolded when Will Russell and Scott Sheffin decided to riff lines from the movie The Big Lebowski and noticed people were riffing back. So goes the idea of a fest. In the most unlikely of places, a Baptist-run bowling alley, Will and Scott opened the doors to the very first Lebowski Fest. My name is uh, Scott Shuffett. I am co-producer of the first annual Big Lebowski What Have You Fest being held in uh, the Fellowship Lanes in Louisville, Kentucky. Will Russell, official Louisvillian. Scott and I, about three months ago, we were vending a, a convention for the Mothership Connection. Uh, they knew those Lebowski lines, and we, we began to realize that there's a community out there, a very, very large community of people with feeling towards a fantastic movie that was created by the Cohen brothers. Someone said we should have a big Lebowski convention. It, it happened. And then it was like, it just bam, bam. I was like, next thing you know, we're taking notes. The bowling alley that we picked was the Fellowship Lanes, which was a Baptist run bowling alley. They had a big sign at the door when we walked in and said, no cussing. <laughs> they also allowed no drinking. But they smoked lots of cigarettes uh -huh. and they, they sold all the hot dogs. Those Baptists were very happy. Fellowship Lanes, we should have a dress as your favorite character contest. Highest bowling score. Highest bowling score. It really just, it wrote itself. We put up a website, and it was just unbelievable the response Fantastic. we got. Yesterday we had like 160 unique visitors to the site. I mean, everybody is just in, in love with this the idea. Media, the bowling guy. So I'm Mike Walsh. I am driving around the country bowling in all 50 states, and I came here kind of out of my way. I was scheduled to be uh, bowling with some funeral directors in South Jersey tonight, but I uh, heard about the party through my website. Someone emailed me about this one, um, so I checked out the Big Lebowski website, and. Uh, couldn't miss it. And you know, anyone who's uh, bothering to throw a party on the shady side of Louisville has got my vote. I understand this is the first annual, and with a lot of things, uh, they never happen again a second time, but I can feel there's a vibe here, uh, and you know that this thing is going to last for 50 years, and I'll be damned if I miss one. So, it began. Two guys from Louisville, Kentucky planted the seed for a social phenomenon. The concept is simple. Gather fans, bowl, drink white Russians, and just be dude. You see what happens? This is what happens. And eventually, the media caught on to spread the Lebowski lexicon. We were driving to her parents' house when I found out that we were in Spin Magazine, yeah. which was the, probably the biggest moment in Lebowski Fest history so far. We were mentioned as one of the 19 events you can't miss with like Lollapalooza and Bonnaroo and fucking Warp Tour and Ozfest. It was unbelievable. This is what the Big Lebowski does, is it brings people together from the far corners of the world. Even if those corners are just North Carolina and Kentucky, it brings them together in a spirit of goodwill. An Achiever is the self-applied title of someone who is a fan of the Big Lebowski. It doesn't matter like what, what you're into as far as like your job or what kind of music you're into. You can walk up to pretty much any achiever and just start up a conversation. They are a very diverse group of folks. I mean, you'll have from a layabout, judges, professionals. What do you guys do for a living? Uh, I'm actually a district attorney, but I, I don't want to say where at this point. <laughs> and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I have a white collar job in Atlanta as well. I work in advertising. I'm a whore. <laughs> well, to me, 
Achiever has kind of taken on a new air about it since I started my first real job this, this past fall. And I have the forum to get me through the day. And these people are really funny. They're great, they're great folks. I can't wait to go to Louisville. I haven't been to Louisville yet, and I'm looking forward to going. And In the summer of that same year, I went to Louisville for the first time. Dios mio, man. What I found there was every bit as stupefying as I had ever seen before. What started as a one-day event took on a carnival atmosphere. Over 4,000 people attended, not exactly a lightweight. Some of the local achievers took me across the river to their private residence in Indiana, and their friendliness was overwhelming. Uh, my name's Andy Shaney. I post to the forum uh, with all the other fellow achievers here. At my house in Indiana, it's uh, the cookout, the forum cookout before the movie. And uh, there's plenty of burgers, there's uh, plenty of beer, and uh, thanks to uh, our other fellow achievers, there's plenty of white Russians to have. It's, it's a good time, and there's dogs to play with. The best way I've always been able to put Lebowski Fest is, uh, imagine the best party you've ever gone to, and then double it. And I think last night is a perfect example of that. Just <laughs> a group of people getting together, things getting, you know, pretty, what could be considered out of hand, but it's still just like a good time. Everyone's really friendly with each other. Our troubles are fucking over, and then we're going to the movie. It's a way of life. A year later, the festival came to my hometown, Los Angeles, the city of angels. Jeff the Dude Dowd, who was the inspiration for the character The Dude, made an appearance, along with some of the other actors from the movie. If you ask me, this whole thing is about friendship, new friends, and forever going on friendship. My name's Jerry Haliva. I'm in the dream sequence, and so I'm trying to convey uh, Saddam as if he's working at this bowling alley. They said, uh, how about coming to the Lebowski Fest in Los Angeles? And I said, great. I had not been familiar with the Lebowski Fest, and then I was uh, invited to come down to the one in Lakewood a year or so ago. I'm sort of driving along, and I see all these people. I've described it to people as clearly the only place I've ever gone where I felt like a rock star. And it dawned on me, because I could see these guys with bathrobes on and flip-flops. And it wasn't about, again, that I played Saddam in the movies. It was that I was the Dom the Big Lebowski. So I thought, they're going to jump on the car. They're going to swamp me. That group of people, everybody knew who I was. Well, everybody was just the opposite of what I thought. My friend, uh, he lives in Portland. He was like, I tell people from, I'm from Kentucky, and they're like, oh, that's where Lebowski Fest is from. And I'm like, fucking A. That is what I'm talking about. Putting Louisville on the map as the home of Lebowski Fest instead of some back backwoods kind of hick thing, you know? We're ready to throw some rocks, knock some pins, maybe uh, harass a few eight-year-olds. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Saddam! Bring the Seattle 7, too. Hey, Saddam, Seattle 7, come over. Tim! There he is. We found our party. <laughs> Currently, I am uh, standing in the uh, line you can see behind me, waiting to get into the Lebowski Fest uh, bowling extravaganza. Uh, the line is currently very long, uh, indicating that it is obviously the most popular part of the festival. I am currently dressed as Saddam Hussein, which has a very small part in the movie and hands out the bowling shoes during a dream sequence to the dude. Uh, the mustache I am wearing is made of real human hair, which I did not realize until after I purchased it. It's also made in Korea, so uh, yeah, I just don't want to think of where this hair has come from. And it's applied to spirit gum, so I really shouldn't smoke anything, because I will burn. When released in 1998, The Big Lebowski did not fill many seats, but that was then. Years later, the movie found its audience and became a cult sensation, to use the parlance of our time. To my amazement, the costumes begin to take on a cerebral element, delving into the minds of the characters from the movie. Last year I went to the Walrus, and that is from the scene where Donnie mistakenly takes the quote by Lennon as being by John Lennon, so he keeps saying, I am the Walrus, I am the Walrus. So I came as a Walrus. It's getting hard to find a good costume. Uh, everything's been done, so you gotta really try hard to find a good costume. Why did you dress up like Sandy Koufax? 
Because Walter says in the movie that the, you know he's damn right he's Jewish. Three thousand years of beautiful tradition from Moses to Sandy Koufax. So you had to rep had to be the span of Moses to Sandy Koufax. And Brian's also one of his buddies that died face down in the mud. So we represent Walter's subconscious. Well, I was inspired by the Lebowski Fest West. I saw a girl dressed up as the toe. And I thought, well, if you could be the toe, you could be anything in the movie. Who's in the movie more than Jeff? The Caucasian. So here we are. You can't have a Lebowski Fest without the Caucasian. After years of filming, I discovered the Achievers embraced me as one of their own. Without even realizing it, I had a character to play in this whole scene. The Chinaman with the camera. <clears throat> Excuse me, camera American. Only one documentarian, and that documentarian's name is Eddie. There's so many bullshit documentaries going on. Johnny come lately, wannabe motherfucker. But they have got the fucking street credit of the one and only real Lebowski Fest documentary. You guys ever hear of the Seattle 7? That's the dude and six other guys. We traveled all the way from Seattle. Seattle 7 right there. It started out as a fucking Vietnam protest, but then it just turned into a fucking bowling team now. It's bigger. It's bigger. It's bigger. We just drink oat sodas and white Russians, you just get her done. The fest went to the city where the other Jeffrey Lebowski, the real dude, protested the man marking his place in the American Cultural Revolution. When I was first asked to go to what was the second Lebowski Festival in Louisville, I was very surprised, I mean really surprised by what I saw. What you saw there, which was really great, was all these people gathering together and making new friends. But I met couples and, and you know, people who were secretaries and doctors and students and, you know, all kinds of different people. The film got to them. I realize now that the fest is more than just a celebration of the movie. It breaks down barriers and builds lifelong friendships. Andy's wife said it best, it is a way of life. One more festival ends, the last I will photograph, but definitely not the last one to come as an achiever. These, these, these fuckers behind the camera, they're married. They have kids, and they're trying to get some kind of shit on us. This is some wholesome, right. wholesome stuff. Hey, hey, Travis. Huh? <laughs> How about your real name? Travis. Travis. Uh, how you like that? It's on camera, isn't it? We know this. Travis. Yeah. You gonna edit that out? Some uh, things that we What are you laughing about, Ronnie, the secrets. sound guy? Really aren't. Yeah? You secrets. should see these two. What they did last night. Huh? It was dangerous. I mean, porn, porn stars wouldn't go that low. Yeah. yeah. All right, how about that? The truth is out now. You have the camera all pointed on us. Look at these guys. Huh? Just a note here. Just a note. This guy's totally unprepared. He has no list of questions. I mean, he's a total slacker, alienated Lebowski guy. Just a note here. This is who comes to interview. All right? Nothing. Nothing.